Our home planet consists of up to 80% plant life. Plants have their own purpose to supply us oxygen, shelter, and food to survive. However, due to urbanization, we have neglected its importance to the point that some damages are already irreversible. This is Project Invasive. This is Chiara, an environmental specialist. Along with her co-workers, Julian Noah, Renchi, Kyle, Joshua, and Cyrus. They are here to discuss the nitrogen and sulfur cycle and its relation with the flora reservoir. But first, what is flora? Well, for starters, flora refers to a group of plant life in each area. Of course, they are essential to the ecosystem itself because it has a dependent relationship between animals. They serve as our basic source of food and as habitat for animals. We all know that biogeochemical cycles help circulate the essentials that people need to survive. Examples of these include the nitrogen and the sulfur cycle. The importance of flora can be highly observed in these two cycles. But what exactly are these processes? The third cycle is the nitrogen cycle. It is a biogeochemical process by which the nitrogen gas in the atmosphere is converted into ammonia, nitrate, and nitrates in different processes that circulate the terrestrial and marine ecosystem. It has five processes namely nitrogen fixation, which is the conversion of nitrogen to ammonium, nitrification, the conversion of ammonium to nitrate, three, assimilation, the absorption of ammonia and nitrates, which is converted into organic nitrogen by a host plant, four, ammonification, the conversion of organic nitrogen to ammonia by decomposers, and five, the denitrification, the conversion of nitrate compounds to nitrogen gas. Flora is an essential part of this cycle, as this will be the medium for ammonium collection that will be eaten by organisms. They are mostly the key factor in transporting the ammonia in the atmosphere to our ecosystem. Another factor is called the sulfur cycle. From the name itself, it is a biogeochemical process that involves the movement of sulfur or sulfates into the atmosphere. Similar to the nitrogen cycle, it also consists of five parts. First is the emission of sulfur dioxide, which is the conversion of sulfur to dimethyl sulfide to sulfur dioxide and to sulfates as it reaches the atmosphere. Next is plant uptake, where plants absorb the sulfate. Third, the composition and waste products, which will allow the sulfates to go back into the soil and to be absorbed by the invader plants. Fourth, wet and dry deposition, wherein sulfur can be precipitated or deposited onto the soil respectively. Lastly, through weather of coastal rocks, the sulfate and sulfite particles absorbed by the soil will be washed away from the soil. These cycles are important in keeping the balance of element quantities through collecting and converting them using plants. However, there are arising issues that cause harm to our ecosystem because of what we call the invasive species. The effects that can occur with this problem can be predetermined using the Le Chatelier's principle. This shows that when one variable of an equilibrium system is disturbed, it produces an effect to counteract the change. To illustrate this principle, one example is the excessive use of synthetic fertilizers which results in making the plants more dehydrated, thus enabling its leaves to have a burnt color. This is due to the fact that nitrogen snatches away the water in plants if they are not regulated. Another instance is the excessive use of sulfur-rich fertilizer as it can induce acid rain when excessive amounts of sulfur are washed away in oceans. This can lead to groundwater contamination. Moreover, they make the soil more acidic which deprives the growth of plants, making the agricultural productivity decline rather than increasing it. Invasive species cause such harm to our environment, specifically plants. These include organisms and plants that we see foreign in a certain area. Let's dive deeper and listen to the next specialist. Invasive species are defined as organisms that belong to another environment that moves in a new one and others it. Now I know what you're thinking. Are we the invasive species? Well, the answer is no. We do not belong to the list of invasive species despite our harmful actions towards our environment. 
we do not belong under that classification because we belong to the environment itself, thus excluding the invasive term of this definition. Now that we are done discussing the important issues, let us now discuss what fertilizers can do to us and the next generation. Epigenetics is defined as a study of the alternation of genes caused by environmental stresses. Plants stationary to its environment, unlike as other organisms, thus they have endured and adapt to its environmental stresses such as the lack of water and sunlight. It is said that they develop high phenotypic plasticity which is utilized for the response of such environmental stresses. As for human epigenetics, groundwater contamination can cause heritable alteration of DNA when intact. According to our research by HOU in 2011, if the groundwater is contaminated by arsenic, 13 out of 17 individuals have tumors, which alters the epigenetic factor. As for contamination by lead, a sample of 47 polar bears have shown that it causes genomic DNA methylation in the lower brainstem. On the other hand, contamination by pesticides have shown to cause testis dysfunction in males and affects ovarian function in females in a sample of animal models. People, our ecosystem is slowly dying. Although we are not classified as invasive species, it cannot be denied that we are harming the environment as well as ourselves. It is up to us to take care of it so the succeeding generations will have enough resources. We must always keep in mind that plants can live independent from us, but we, humans, cannot live without them. Stop using synthetic fertilizers. Instead, use organic ones in order to regulate the balance of the nitrogen and sulfur cycle. Together, let's aim to save to save. To save. The environment. That's seven and a half minutes. See you next term.